Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Byron and I'm a traffic engineer living in the US with about a decade of experience. Today, we're gonna to talk about the three biggest regrets I have when I was a civil engineering student. Keep in mind, when I say regrets, there are a lot of things that I wish happened differently when I was in college. A lot of those things were not under my control. I'm not talking about those things. Instead, we're gonna talk about things that I had full control over of and I wish I changed. Be sure to stay for the last one because that's the most important. So let's get to the first regret. So my first regret has to do with student professional organizations. In the engineering industries, we have professional organizations. A lot of times you'll hear about these organizations and they'll offer a lot of things like you'll get to network with the other students or meet uh, industry professionals. And you also get to hear presentations about news happening in the industry. And that's true, those are all benefits and college can be a lot more than just sitting in your room studying and just going to class. So in college, I was involved with two organizations, ASCE and ITE. ASCE was American Society of Civil Engineers and it encompassed basically all the civil engineers. So there were many students in this organization. ITE was the Institute of Transportation Engineers and this was a little more specialized as it encompass just the transportation side of civil engineering. At the time, even though I was part of these organizations, I wasn't really active. I would go to their monthly meetings, uh, have, have some pizza, talk to other students who were involved in that organization. I saw a presentation or two, um, but that was pretty much the extent of how much I was involved. And looking back, that was just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more you can get out of these organizations. What I didn't understand at the time was these organizations had leadership positions that one could apply for. So why do I feel this is so important now? Well, it turns out that you don't always come by leadership opportunities in your industry. If you're fortunate, you may get some when you're starting out on the job. Say you graduated from college and you're working on your first job. You're doing really well and your supervisor notices. Well, that, and that supervisor gives you more responsibilities and even some leadership responsibilities. That's a great situation to be in, especially if you want to go in that direction. My first job, I found that hard to come by. And when I wasn't getting those leadership opportunities, I felt like I was getting stuck. And the problem was because I wasn't working on my leadership skills, it just made the chances of getting even more leadership opportunities in the future even lower. That's not a situation you want to be in. So before you even start your first job as a full-time civil engineer, you can work on those leadership skills while you are in college. It's one area where I wish I could have put more effort in. Would I have become an officer in one of these professional organizations? Maybe no, but by not trying, the answer is always no. My second regret is I spent too much time training and trying to learn the wrong things. When I was a student, I felt that in order to be an exceptional engineer, I had to be really good at using certain software programs in the industry. For example, one commonly used software program for civil engineers is AutoCAD. Now, while there is some truth in needing to learn these programs, I approached it all wrong. Because I was applying for a lot of internships and entry-level jobs, I made it my mission to learn all these different software programs. I paid out of my own pocket to learn AutoCAD, AutoCAD Civil 3D, MicroStation, and a couple other programs. AutoCAD Civil 3D is an advanced and more feature-rich version of AutoCAD for civil engineers. I spent so much time and money on these training programs just so I can list them on my resume. And as many of you know, I got my first job in traffic engineering, which is a very specialized field in civil and transportation engineering. You know what happened on my first job? I ended up using barely any of these programs. So I sometimes wonder if it was really worth it to spend all that time training when I didn't even know what my first job would be. Now I know the answer was no, it wasn't worth it. What I learned, which was a lot closer to my experience, is that if an employer really wanted you to use a specific software program, they would train you. It does help to know some basics, but to try and guess all the advanced skills that I needed to know turned out not to be a wise decision for me. So it turns out for my first job, I actually needed to know how to use Synchro, which is more for timing traffic lights and doing traffic analysis. I got training in that and I picked it up really fast. Looking back as a student, there were so many other things I could have spent time on that would have been more worth it and more universal to many other jobs. Things like project management, working on my communication skills, etc. The only exception to this is if you know the software program that you need to be proficient in, then by all means, get better at it. Maybe you are an intern in a company and they plan on hiring you full time and you know what software programs they use. That's great. Go for it. If that's not you, think about how much time you'll spend learning something that you may not even use in the future. So instead of spending all the time taking those advanced AutoCAD courses, I really wish I just spent time learning the basic one at most. My third and most important regret has all to do with sleep. When I was in college, 
My sleep habits were horrible. I registered classes which made my day-to-day -day schedule widely different. I tried to take on more activities than I could, which led to me sleeping late and then waking up the next day tired and having a not so great day. I made no effort to change this or come up with a plan to stick to a consistent sleep schedule. When you're young, you feel invincible. And it's always easier to be stubborn than to try to change. Now, I'm sure every college student from time to time has to struggle with having a healthy sleep schedule or having to occasionally pull the all-nighter. As I get older, I'm just starting to understand the importance of getting enough sleep. I can really feel the effects of not getting enough sleep. It can derail the whole day. When I was younger, I can get through the day tired and getting through it felt like success. I was getting B's and C's and I thought that was okay. But it really wasn't when I now step back and think about it. I could have been so much better. Recent science knows a lot more about the negatives of not getting enough sleep and sleep deprivation, even when it affects college students. It's not a good thing. You can expect significant drop in grades and even effects on your mood. There could even be long-term negative effects to your memory. So if I can tell my younger self to do one thing differently, I would tell him to have better sleeping habits. Spend some time to read books about sleep and to really understand the sleep cycle. Do not take on so much in college to the point where your sleep is always affected. I really believe this one change would affect so much and it helped build better habits so that I wouldn't sabotage myself later in life. Well, if you like some of this discussion about the civil engineering career, be sure to check out some of my other videos about transportation or engineering career advice. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.